So we come this morning, O oh God, and we say we exalt you. We lift you up on high. You said if you be lifted up, you will draw all men to yourself. It is our desire that in our worship, in our praise, that we will lift up the name of Jesus higher and higher. That we will, O oh God, begin to see the hand of God at work even in our lives. So we pray over this house and every place where your children of God are gathered. May the presence of the Lord, may the power of the Lord, may there be an open heaven over their lives. May there be an open heaven over this church, Lord. And so today, we ask that you would speak, Lord, that you would begin a move upon our hearts. In Jesus' name. John chapter 1 verses 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word word was with God and the word was God amen so when we talk about in the beginning was the word we know it's Jesus making reference to Jesus and the word was with God and the word was God so it's speaking about the headship of, that he is part of the Godhead Jesus Christ he was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made that means the bible goes on to qualify it says all things were made through christ jesus that's why when jesus later on is not only introduced in the new testament but he was there even at creation the bible says all things were made through him that means he was part of the process of what God was making. Creation was made through him. But then it comes on in verse 4 and it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. The Bible says, In him, that means was life. That means the life of God produces light. We are challenged to be the light of God on the earth. But the Bible says you can only produce life, light if you have life. Amen? If you have the life of God, then you can only produce the light of God. Amen? So this is why it is important that Christ in us helps us to shine. The Bible says let this light, let your light so shine before men that men may see your Father. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. I pray today, let your light shine in darkness. That this week, you will become the light of the world. The only way we can become the light of the world is when we have the life of God inside of us. Amen. So Father, today, we ask that the word, Jesus Christ, that was part of the creation of this universe and the earth, also now produce life in us. Produce light through us. That the world would see our Father. They'll see our light and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So let help us to be a shining light. Whether it be in our community. Whether it be in our home. Whether it be, O oh God, in our workplaces. Whether it be in our places of business whether it be in our schools or universities, help us to be the light. So today, Lord, shine through us. Isaiah said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Bless your people today, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, we want to just welcome every one of you to our Sunday morning worship service, amen, and we pray that you are blessed as you worship together with us, for those that are here at church and those that are joining us online, we pray that God will just begin to minister to you, join us as we worship, praise God, and even get into his word, over to the team. Amen. Hallelujah, I don't know about you this morning, but I'm excited to be found in the house of God, just to rejoice and to give God all the glory, amen, come on, you're going to put on your dancing shoes. We're going to clap and we're going to praise and we're going to shout to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on. He's
a God that did it again. Oh, it's coming from my heart.
You are trusting God for a victory. Trusting God for a breakthrough. Make that be your declaration. Declaration. I'm going to see a victory in this area, Lord. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Some of you have been trying to deal with things in your own ability, in your own strength, by your own, by your own achievements. But today, we surrender to you, Lord. We say, Lord, we're going to see a victory because the battle belongs to the Lord. Whether it be a physical ailment, the battle belongs to the Lord. Lord, you're going to give me triumph over that. Whether it be whatever the condition may be today, we speak healing over the bodies of God's people in the name of Jesus. We pray today that you are touching lives. You are changing lives. We pray today for those that have mental challenges of God. Father, when the enemy has been attacking their mind, Oh God, making them feel like they're not able to overcome this today. We speak, oh God, today that every spirit of fear, every spirit of doubt is gone in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for deliverance over the minds of your people in Jesus' name. We pray, oh God, for those of God that have gone through emotional pain and those of God that are spiritually feel, oh God, that like they are distant from you. Lord, I pray today that you will restore them. Restore them. In the name of Jesus, may healing come. May healing come. In the name of Jesus, spiritual healing, physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing. In the name of Jesus, that which will God the enemy tried to use to destroy, that which the enemy tried to use to try to bring you down. We speak today, Lord, that you are turning things Around in the favor of your people. Bless them. So Lord, we declare, I see a victory. I may not feel it. I do not know when. I do not know how. But I declare today, I see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I pray, O oh God, for every challenge that your people are facing show up on their behalf. Give them wisdom. Give them faith. In the name of Jesus, you are able to do that. You are able to do that. So we thank you for answered prayers. We thank you for divine breakthroughs. As we get around your word this morning, that you would speak to us and through your word to us. We ask in Jesus' name. So we say, speak, Lord, for we your servants here. And everybody said, Amen and amen, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Amen. It's good to see you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. It's good to see your faces. Amen. Some of you, we haven't seen you for a while. But it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I wanted to share with you the word of the Lord this morning. And I started uh, this morning the series on, um, well, not the series, but just a portion of scripture, leading from a teaching that Pastor Maggie has been doing the past few weeks at our Bible study. She spoke on the book of Ezra, and then last week she spoke on the book of Haggai. If you, if you have an opportunity, go listen to some of the thoughts of the very, very powerful on the book of Ezra, and it's on the Wednesday Bible study. It's on, on YouTube. You can find it there. But today I want to build from Ezra, and I want to go from Ezra chapter 1. And uh, I want to lay a foundation, but I'm going to try and go a little bit further. So there's parts that uh, we can catch up with at a later stage. But when we look at Ezra chapter 1, we see how God begins to speak to King Cyrus. So I've entitled my message today, Building Attracts Opposition. That means whenever you're about to build something, whenever God is about to do something greater in your life, when God is about to elevate you, take you to a, a different level, even in your faith and walk with Him, there's always opposition. Amen? You need to expect opposition in your life. We don't like it. We don't want it. But we need to understand there is always opposition. Amen? 
So we need to know how to deal with opposition in our lives. So today we're going to deal with some of this. In, in Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 it says, Now in the first year of Cyrus the king of Persia, in the first year, Cyrus the king of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus the king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom. And he also said, put it in writing. He says, thus saith the Lord, thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord has, God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Now look at this. This is, a Persian king, an unsaved man, an ungodly man, he has enslaved Israel, taken Israel captive. It was done through, through the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar. And now God begins to speak to him. But the reason God speaks to him is to fulfill a word that Jeremiah the prophet gave. I want you to understand, God's word concerning your life will be fulfilled. That means whatever God said, He will do. Amen? So you need to understand that. Whatever God said, He will do. And even if it means moving on the heart of an unsaved man, He will do it in order to achieve His purpose. God moves on the heart of the king because he was positioned and influential enough to bring about the change that was needed. Amen? Amen? Because remember, Israel could not do nothing because they were already captive to Persia. So the only person that could allow them to do what they needed to do was he God had to move on the heart of the king. Now, now, now this is something, this is something that is a challenge. The word that God gave him is build him a house in Jerusalem of Judah. Now we know that when Nebuchadnezzar took Israel captive, they went and destroyed the temple. They destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. They took all of the, 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 the treasure that, and all of the implements of gold and silver and all the precious things of the temple and they took it and put it in the treasury of Persia. So the children of Israel were now captive to this ungodly nation. But I want you to understand this. No one within Israel was strong enough to say, let us go and rebuild the temple. Nobody was strong enough to say, we're going to rebel against this that has taken us captive and go and rebuild the temple. They were captive. They were a captive audience of the captor. Now I want us to understand this is not anything strange to the day in which we live. Because many times there are things that has taken us captive. And we are unable to do the things that God is expecting of us to do. And when the church cannot is not doing what God has told us to do, God will even move on the heart of an unsaved man to fulfill his purpose. Now that is a big indictment on the church. It's an indictment on the church when the church is not getting God. It's an indictment on the church when the body of Christ is not doing what they were called to do. And God has to use an unsaved person to fulfill his purpose. May it never happen in our day. May it never happen to us in our family, in our homes. That God has to use somebody else to help us to get to do what he has asked us to do. So we see here that God moves on the heart of, of, of King Cyrus. Not only does he get a dream or he does get a word from the Lord, but he also says, put it in writing. Let it be a law or decree that this is what is doing. And God gave him the mandate. What mandate? Build the house of God. Build the house of God. And then he goes in verses 3 and he asks the people, he says, who amongst you of all his people, that means of the children of Israel, he says, may, may God be with you as you go to Judah and build the house of God of Israel. And then he says, 
when you're going to build, you're not going empty-handed. He says to the Persians and to the people around, he says, give them gold, give them silver, give them livestock, give them off free will offerings that they can go and build the house of the Lord. When God gives you a mandate, he doesn't send you without resources. He sends you with resources to go and build. So they got the mandate. They got the, 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 the plan. They got the, the, the permission. They were legally authorized. They were got the resources that they needed to go and build the house. But he asked the question, who of you are of the children of Israel? Arise and go and build. But you know what's a strange thing? Not all of Israel got up to go and build the house of God. It's possible sometimes for us to become comfortable even in captivity. When we are not in the place that God wants us to be, it's easy sometimes for us to become comfortable. The church of Jesus Christ right now has become comfortable where they are. Sitting in our homes, doing our own thing, whenever we feel like we praise God, whenever we feel like we serve God. I want you to understand the kingdom of darkness is not on lockdown. And therefore, the kingdom of light should not be on lockdown. Now, I'm not talking about disobeying the laws of the country, none of, none of that. I'm saying we should still be spiritually alert. We should still be accomplishing, developing our spiritual life. Because we need to understand one of the challenges of the present day is a strong spiritual attack against the church. And one of the biggest, the biggest attacks against the church is a spirit of deception. That means getting you to believe something that is not true. That's what deception is. Getting you to believe a lie as a truth. And the lie that is the truth is that it's dangerous for us to sell God in this day. Can, you can mask it in anything. But that's what we, we were led to believe. We were led to believe that we can go to the mall and we're safe. We led to believe we can sit in a restaurant and be safe. We led to believe that you can go to the gym and be safe. We led to believe that you can go to the cinemas and sit in a movie theater. No ventilation and you're safe. But if you go to the church, you're going to catch something. Yeah. The only thing you should be catching in church is the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. The only thing you should be catching in this church is the power of God. Yes. Is the presence of God. Let's be, let, 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 let's be real. Yeah. We've got to a place where even today we want to serve God. Many, many people that are at home will either get out of bed, don't brush their teeth, time, say maybe we listen to something. When you get a little bit tired, you switch it off and you go. You don't listen and say, no, I've got a little bit of church today. That's not church. It was a means to help transition the challenge, the period. But let us get back to being the church, doing it. Now look at this. When, when, when the King Cyrus, evil king, gave permission to all of Israel go arise and build the house of God. You know how many tribes did it? Only the tribe of Judah. Only the tribe of Benjamin. Two tribes. Out of the 12 tribes of Israel got up and said, we're going to go and build. Right now, those that are beginning to do the work of God, even in this time, we are facing our own challenge right now. In our day, we, 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 we're facing a similar challenge like in the days of Ezra, and we call to rebuild the house of God, the body of Christ. But the reality, there's only a few that is arising and building. Yeah. And that is not uncommon, because a lot of people like to come into something that is established. Yeah. But very few people want to get their hands dirty, and even in the time of crisis, begin to do something. Because right now, the spirit of self-preservation is more. Remember the word of the Lord that cautions us, that in the last days, men will become lovers of themselves more than the lovers of God. People will become, they, they'll put themselves 
a head of God. And, 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 and Haggai says this, how can you dwell in your sealed houses when the house of God lies in ruin? The body of Christ needs to arise. The only way we are going to have any breakthrough on the, in this country. Come on, don't sleep in South Africa. Don't sleep because the reality is the, the church and the body of Christ in South Africa is under the greatest attack. There's a spirit of secularism that has come into our country. There's a spirit of witchcraft that is allowed to begin to lull the voices of the church of Jesus Christ. And the longer we begin to stand divided, the longer we stand complacent, the more the spirit of the enemy is beginning to raise up in our nation. And our nation is, is, is getting weaker and weaker and more destroyed and more corrupt and more evil and more evil. And we need to understand this. You and I, all of us are victims. Irrespective of your race group, irrespective of your culture group, irrespective of your gender, irrespective of your orientations, your education, all of us in our country has been hoodwinked into believing certain things that are not true. And we are under a spirit of deception in our country. We've been lied to by the powers that be, and we are standing here and we are just accepting it. We are saying this is our faith. Our country is amongst the top 20 countries that is hit in the whole world by the pandemic, and yet our country does nothing to care for us. They don't provide a vaccine, they don't provide treatment, they don't provide access to those type of things. Yet all over the world, people, countries that have, are less affected than us are already starting to put programs in place. We, we need to understand that's a spirit of deception. We've been lied to. Come on. And the only way this is going to begin to change is when the church begins to take its rightful place and say, let righteousness rule. Yes. Yes. Let godly governance rule. Yes. Let the word, the, we, 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 we stop becoming stupid right. in our behavior. I'm not saying be stupid, I'm saying in our behavior. Yes. We become blinded. Right. A progressive nation like us cannot be in the place and position that we are. A wealthy nation like for us. Mm. We've been plundered. The Bible says the devourer is coming. Yeah. And devouring. Mm. And it's not about us making it. Yeah. What about what are we gonna leave for our children and our children's children? Yeah. You may say, hey, but we're okay, we're just making it, we, yeah. we're okay, we got you know, we can still do our things. But the reality is the effects of this we're gonna feel five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years down the line. It has to change. The reality is there's going to be, I pray that we will become the Judas and the Benjamins in our generation. That will say we're going to go and build. And you know when you stand up to do the things of God, resources will come your way. Whatever you need to build. The Bible says they were given gold, silver, livestock, goods, precious things, and even free will offerings. Because the king knew that in order to worship their God, they needed something to worship God. That means you cannot worship God without a sacrifice. I am so honored that even within our church, there have been those that remain faithful in their giving and their support of the local church that has kept the doors open, even through the lockdown, even through the pandemic, has kept this ministry running, that there's no lack. We were even able to do more, be able to be a blessing. So we thank God for Thank God for those that have been faithful. But it hasn't been everywhere. It's been like this. The two is not even 10%. Right? It's almost 10, 20%. And that's true even in our church. 20% of the church carries the rest of the body. It's the same in the body of Christ. So we find this, that they, they were given this. And then they come, the Bible says after that, they, 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 they begin to arise and they go and, and, and they were given instructions to go and build. And so in chapter 3, we find that before they start to build, they come on the ground where the temple was and they first begin to worship God. And they worship God by offering their sacrifices, their birth offerings, their free will offerings. And the Bible says after, it was almost after two years, of beginning to praise and worship God, that they begin to lay the foundations. In, in chapter 3, verses 8, it says, Now in the second year, and the, 
the second month of the second year, they're coming to the house of God in Jerusalem. That Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the people, they began to work and appointed people to work on building the house of the Lord. And it says in verses 10, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple, the priests stood with their trumpets and they began to worship God. Amen. Look at this, what they said in verses 11. They sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to God, for He is good, His mercy endures forever. Then all the people shouted with a great shout and, and they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house was laid. The, the building is not completed. The foundation was laid. And just because the foundation was laid, there was promise and hope that the building will come up. I want you to understand, they shouted and they worshiped and they praised God at the foundation. Some of you are waiting for everything to come perfect, everything to be done, everything to be correct, the, the circumstances to be right before you can move forward. The Bible says shout at the foundation because the foundation is evidence. The foundation is evidence of a promise that God is going to begin to fulfill and complete what he started. The Bible says they praise God at the foundation. The Bible says even the fact that the older people that once saw the, uh, the, the, the temple of Solomon, that Solomon built and the beauty of it, now began to weep because they were crying that once again we can have a place to worship. Once again we can worship our God. And those that were younger and never had that reference, they shouted because now we're out of captivity. We can come and build something that is a symbol of our freedom. And so they shouted. The Bible says that the, 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 they could not distinguish between the, cry, the cries and the weeping and the sound of the, of the shouting. That the, so much so that the, the, they said they did not know who, whether they were weeping or they were shouting. But the reality, they were all rejoicing at what God is doing. I declare over every house of God, over the body of Christ, here in South Africa, the body of Christ throughout the world, that they will be singing again in the house of God. They will be shouting again in the house of God. They will be praising again in the house of God. Because this is what is God's desire. But I want you to understand, opposition doesn't arise up until there is evidence of something new beginning. And as soon as the foundations were raised, as soon as worship goes up to the Lord, the adversaries and opposition begins to arise. Let's go to chapter 4. That's where we're going to spend time today. It says, now verse 1, it says, now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the fathers of the house and they said, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Asherah, the king of, of, of Assyria, who has brought us here. Look at that. The first point of opposition, they come to you and they say, Let us build with you. Now I want you to understand, not everyone that is with you should be building with you. You can't just build with everybody and anybody. Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the head said to them, you may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build the Lord of God of Israel. As King Cyrus said, Remember what the decree that Silas said? Those that are of the children of Israel arise and go and build. Now the Persians, the Greeks, the Medes, the others that were around, they said, now come let us build with you. Be careful with who you're building with. Just because they have the resource, just because they're volunteering to build with you doesn't mean you should be building with them. 
What you are building is evidence of your relationship with your God. And you've got to learn how to build. Don't build with everybody. Some of you got a lot of people that you have tried to build your life with. Some of them are not saved. The Bible says, how can you walk together unless two agree? How can two walk together unless they agree? The, the, the covenant is not established in the fact that we, we make a formal agreement. No, no, no. Covenant is different from agreement. It means that, that your God is my God. Your people is my people. You've got to come to that place where, 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 where we understand how we are building. So the first thing they come and they, they say, let us build with you. So how does opposition come? Opposition comes in with good intentions, good motives. Be discerning. People may have good motives, good intentions, but it doesn't necessarily mean God has ordained them to be part of your process. Then the second thing, when, 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 when Zerubbabel and Joshua said to them, no, 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 you can't build with us. We're going to build for God ourselves. The second thing they do in verse 4, then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in the building and hired counselors against them to frustrate the purposes. If they can't build with you, they'll come and frustrate you. They'll come and discourage you. They'll come and, and, and begin to cause all sorts of trouble with you. I want you to understand this. This is the, you have to understand the, 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 the behavior is metamorphing into a greater opposition. So they first come with good intentions. But the same ones that came with good intentions, when they're rejected, they become angry. How many of you have ever dealt with rejected people? You know, rejected people, bitter people, it's hard to build with them. There are some people that are, that are with you, but they're not with you. It's almost like a Brutus and Caesar incident. They're with you, but if you turn your back, they got you. They'll put a knife in you. They want to just, they're not there to build you up. Yes. They're there to build them. That's right. yeah. They want to be seen. When, when they can't be seen in it, they will break everything down. They say, if I can't have any part of this, I'm going to break it down. Be careful even in the house of God. Yes. Understand those that have a wicked intention. May the Lord give us discernment yes. in this hour yes. of those that have wicked devices. May God frustrate them. I declare in the name of Jesus, everyone that rises up against you, may God begin to frustrate their plans. May God visit them in the name of Jesus. May God deal with them. I, 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 I pray this. Don't uh, understand this. Uh, the, 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 remember when, when the children of Israel rose up against Moses and they wanted to kill Moses. And the Lord says, uh, Moses, leave me. I'm, I'm going to sort these people out. Because they didn't speak against you, they spoke against me. People don't realize that when they rise up against the children of God, they rise up against the Father. And the Father will deal with them. You know the worst place to be in is not in my hands. I may inflict some pain on you. Honestly. But there's a God in heaven. Yeah. Amen. If he visits you, be sorry. So this is a warning. It's a warning to everyone that tries us to rise up against the house of God. Whether it be in our country, whether it be people in power. Don't, I don't have, I'm not afraid of political power. It's not real power. Because tomorrow politicians can change. Yeah. Then their power has changed. Yes. Fearful thing, the Bible says, to fall into the hands of the living God. Yeah. Then they come. So they, they, they try to frustrate. And when they realized that they couldn't frustrate, they rose up and became the accuser. In verse 6, in the reign of Aristarchus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah. In the days of, of Artaxerxes, they begin to write a letter. So now understand, they took it a step further. They said, now if we're not going to get your attention, we're going to write to him that has the power to this. So what they do, they write a letter 
to, to the, the new king. And, and, and they begin to bring this in verses 11. This is what the letter said. To the king Artaxerxes, from your servants, the men of the region, let it be known to the, to the king that the Jews who came up from you are building the rebellious and evil city. And they are finishing its walls and repairing its foundations. And look at how they approach it. They say, let it now be known to the king, if the city is built and the walls are complete, they will not pay tax or pay tribute or custom and the king's treasury will be diminished. He says, you will not receive the financial support. This is the thing. He says, he says if they build a temple, you see, that's why they keep in the, clo the church, church closet. If we build a house of God, there's nothing coming to you. Even in our country, they were happy with the church as long as the church was feeding the poor and doing the things that the government couldn't do during the lockdown. Yeah. But the time when the church has opened the doors, they said, no, no, no. Yeah. But you can feed the poor. Yeah. But don't be the church. Look at this is what they say here. They say, they say here, uh, if they build the city, hey, they're going to turn against you. They're not going to pay the taxes. They're not going to. And, and then it says, we inform the king of this. If the walls, if, if they built, in verses 16, if the, if, the, if the city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the result is that you will have no dominion beyond the river. What did they do? They said to him, they, they sounded a warning that the possibility is that you will lose control over territory. And as soon as that was done, the king would read it. They said, go also and look in the history of how, how Jerusalem was a rebellious city and did not allow us to, to, to be planted there before. And they said, look at how, how they had strong kings before. They fought against the Persians and the Medes and the Assyrians. And they're saying, if you allow them to build this, they're going to become strong again. And they're going to fight you and they're going to get your own freedom. How does the opposition arise? They'll first try to join themselves to you. When they can't join themselves to you, they'll secondly try to frustrate you. If they can't frustrate you, they'll begin to, 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 to go to the powers that be to try and control you. They will try to frustrate it. And what happens? The, the, the king go, uh, eventually sends a letter and says, let them stop the building process. He says, let them stop the building. Why did he say, let them stop the building? Let them cease building. Because if they continue, he put a fear in his heart that this is what is going to happen. But I thank God that there are a people like Zerubbabel and Joshua that will say, we're going to build. They continue building, even when the king told them, cease to build. And, and when they continued building, they weren't afraid of what it was going to cost them. Because they said, we are, we are mandated by Cyrus to build. And unless there is a decree that reverses Cyrus, so they also write their letter. And they say to the king, this is, we are only doing what we were authorized to do. You see, I want you to understand that only time that the church is going to have victory is when the church begins to stand and say, we are authorized to do what we do. Yeah. And, they say, and, and he said, although we are authorized by God, but we were also authorized by, 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 by the earthly powers that be. So say. We need to understand the church is authorized even by God, but also by the earthly powers that be, legal process was to be in existence. And so they go and they write and they say, this is what, the, what was given. And they remind him and say, now you go again, look at the chronicles, look at the decrees that Cyrus made and fulfill it. Because I understand that once a, if a king took over from another king here to honor the rules of law that the other king made, 
unless he is making a decree to reverse it. And the challenge is when you reverse something that a previous king or leader made, it sh shows negatively on you because you, you are saying you are not grateful for what was handed down to you. And when they brought it before him, he, he goes back and he says, he reverses everything and he says, good. And let everything that Cyrus said be fulfilled. He says, let the resources be given, let out of the treasuries, everything be returned back. Everything that was taken out of the old temple of Solomon, let it be given back. He said, he said to them, don't even worry if you need livestock for, for, for offering your burnt offerings, it will be provided for you. And he said, after everything, if you're still running short, I will give to you out of your, my, my treasure. I want you to understand, when you stand up for God, God will show up on your behalf. Yeah. But I want you to understand, in the face of opposition, it's not easy. Sometimes we get overwhelmed by the opposition, but we don't realize we, there's a word of the Lord. The Bible started off in Ezra chapter 1, verses 1, and it says that the word of God to Jeremiah may be fulfilled. As long as there's a word, let the word be fulfilled. Everything else, God is going to work it out. God is working it out. So I want you to understand, whenever you build it, some of you say, but when I get closer to God spiritually, things start going wrong. So I'd rather this, you know, be casually. No, 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 no. The Bible says, may the Lord raise up a standard against the enemy. May the Lord raise up a standard against the enemy. That maybe you stand. Stand in that time. Stand in that time. It's going to be an encouragement. It's going to be a blessing. It may be difficult. I want you to understand that the church of Jesus Christ is going to go through a, a, a opposition. But we've got to stand for what we believe in. And so sometimes when I say certain things, uh, uh, we are, may seem difficult to hear. But I want you to understand, we are serving notice on the enemy. Yes. We are doing what the children of Israel, what Zerubbabel and Joshua did. They had a mandate, and they were going to fulfill the mandate, irrespective of what was going to happen. Because opposite, you can't stop opposition. It will always be there. You can stop how you react to opposition. You can change how you react to opposition. So may the opposition not frustrate you. But may the purposes of God concerning your life be fulfilled. Come on, let's just bow our heads together. I see a victory. For well, the battle belongs to the Lord. Father, just show us a victory. Your people. May they arise and be in this hour. In verses 9. It says, then we ask those elders and those that spoke, spoke to us, who commanded you to build this temple and to finish its walls? And they put their names on it. May your name be amongst those that will stand up even in the face of opposition and say, don't worry, it's me. I'm standing here. And what did they say? We are the servants of God of heaven and earth. And we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago by the great king of Israel, built and completed. But because our fathers provoked God to rock, he gave us into the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar, and who took us captive and who destroyed the temple. However, Cyrus the king issued a decree to build the house of God. May we be a generation of builders, even in the face of opposition. And this is what they continue to write. Here. It says, now therefore, if it seems good to the king, let the search be known in the king's treasure house, which is there in Babylon, whether it is a decree issued by King Cyrus to build the house of God. And let the king send us his pleasure concerning the matter. I declare today that God is moving on the hearts of even those that are unbelieving. Some of you may be working in companies where your manager, your boss, the owner of the company may be not saved. But God is still going to protect you, even in that place. 
Some of you may be doing business with people that are, that are not saved, but may they see the light of God. May you be, still be the salt and the light wherever you are. Whatever you do, may you see the hand of the Lord. I declare over our nation that breakthrough will take place even in our nation. We're going to see a turnaround as the body of Christ emerges into its rightful place. Pray for the church. Pray for our leaders. Leaders of the church. That in this hour they will be bold. They will be strong. They will stand in the face of it. I declare today that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Even those that are ungodly leaders, God can move on their heart. Even in our nation. Father, let there be leaders, community leaders, political leaders, that will have a passion for our nation. Have a caring heart for the people. May, they, may their decisions be governed by a godly conscience. Holy Spirit, may you visit them in the night, cause change to come. Look upon this nation, look upon your people. I pray for the body of Christ that is in the place where we've been lulled into a spirit of deception. May the spiritual eyes of your sons and daughters open. As we are building our careers, as we are building our families, as we are building our homes, help us to build our spiritual relationship with you. Help us to prioritize that. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.